wasn't that long ago when the Mazda CX-5 was actually the best-selling SUV outright in Australia. I think it was back in sort of 2017 where it was even beating the RAV4. Today it is getting a little bit old now but in terms of the exterior design it still looks sharp, it still looks sporty and relevant in my opinion. Here we're testing the top spec Akira model with the 2.5 turbo petrol with all-wheel drive. It carries through Mazda's Kodo design language, which, yeah, even that is starting to fall behind in a generation. If you look at the new CX60 and CX90, the design is a bit more, it's a bit just tweaked compared with this. This doesn't have the wider and thinner headlights and taillights like those. In this particular color combination, it does look a little bit boring and kind of blends in with the crowd. And then inside you can see more of the evidence that this is sort of an older generation vehicle. Although I, st I quite like it. I like that there's mechanical dials in the instrument cluster and I like that the screen doesn't completely take over your view. All of the materials feel nice. It's got this sort of soft rubbery stuff across the dash and top of the door trims, even lower down here and the grab handle. And it's really well made too. Like there's no squeaks or rattles, nothing moves about. Everything's got a solid build. I'm not sure about this carbon fiber style trim across the dash. Maybe some, you know, fake wood or even some sort of metallic trim would be nicer. And this bar through here kind of looks just a little bit basic, really. It'd be nice if that was split up in another trim just to give it a sort of more 3D effect. But you do have wireless phone charging as well as a separate climate control panel, which is excellent. I think that's great to have that separated from the main screen just so you can adjust and fiddle around without having the distraction of having to dive into the screen. You've also got a drive mode button with off-road, normal and sport. Passenger space is really good. I feel like I can move it about a bit. It's not really you know, claustrophobic and intimate. I've got good visibility as well. I can see over that mirror, there's a bit of a gap between the pillar and the mirror. And also rear visibility is quite good compared with some of the more modern SUVs that go for a more of a coupe shape with a very thick D pillar. Rear passenger space is okay. It's not the best in this class anymore. I think they have really moved forward with that with some models, particularly the, the electric models that have, you know, a completely flat floor. But they are nice seats in the back too. Soft leather, kind of separated, kind of individual seats for the outer positions. You've got climate vents as well for added comfort and cup and bottle holders. Boot space doesn't stack up that well against rivals anymore. A lot of them have around five to 600 liters with this with over 400 liters. Yeah, it's just not that impressive anymore. Out on the road, I do like this engine, 170 kilowatts, and apparently it produces a bit more if you put in 98 Ron. I don't know what is in this. The uh, Mazda fills it up before they give it to us. I'm assuming it has 98 in it, but I don't know for sure. Even so, 170 kilowatts is good for today's standards. Some of the rivals need hybrid assistance to reach that sort of power. So we've got the new Kia Sportage and Hyundai Tucson hybrid that produce 169 and 172 respectively. This engine also powers the CX-9 large SUV. So in this midsizer, yeah, that has no problem at all. And 420 Newton meters, that's a nice amount of torque for a four cylinder. It's got a good enough response for overtaking. It picks up speed pretty easily. It does have a bit of a roaring sort of throaty note to it as well. Although it does seem a little bit rough compared with some Jeez, rivals. Although it does seem a little bit rough compared with some rivals. In terms of the ride comfort, I think this strikes a nice balance between just firmness, stability and sportiness, as well as comfort. It can absorb, you know, pretty bad country roads like this very easily, but at the same time, it's not, you know, bone jarringly stiff. I would prefer a setup like this over something that's more cushy and comfortable, particularly if you're driving on roads like this regularly. There's that feeling of less stability when you're bouncing around everywhere. Whereas this feels nicely tied down. And yeah, in the corners, it feels good. This thing steers nicely. There's decent communication coming back through the wheel. It does feature a kind of torque vectoring technology, which I'm not really a fan of. I feel like the platform should be just you know, stable and centered as, you know, naturally. It shouldn't need reactive technologies, but overall this does handle well compared with a lot of its rivals. All right.
right, let's head out now to the private road and do some performance testing. 